I'm David Toman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about coenzyme Q10, or CoQ10, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and possible side effects. Coenzyme Q10 is a natural enzyme synthesized in your body. It's also known as ubiquinone because, because it is ubiquitous in the human body. CoQ10 is used in every single cell. Your body uses CoQ10 faster than it can produce it. So you need supplemental CoQ10 either from food or from a supplement. You can get CoQ10 from eating fatty fish, beef, poultry, nuts, seeds, and oils. CoQ10 provides fuel for the mitochondria in your cells. Mitochondria are the tiny power plants that energize each cell. And your brain has a higher concentration of mitochondria in each cell than most other organs. CoQ10 is a powerful antioxidant. It protects your cells from free radical damage. Oxidative damage has been implicated in several diseases including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, and Lou Gehrig disease. Coenzyme Q10 is used throughout your body. It helps produce more energy in your cells, boosts heart health, helps maintain healthy blood pressure and immune system, and reduces the signs of aging. But here we're talking about how CoQ10 affects your brain health and chemistry. Now there's two different kinds of CoQ10 or coenzyme Q10. There's ubiquinone and ubiquinol. So what's the difference? You'll find both of them in the vitamin shop. Coenzyme Q10 is a fat-soluble nutrient produced naturally in your body. The highest concentration of CoQ10 is in the organs that receive the most energy, including your heart, liver, muscles, kidneys, and brain. CoQ10 is in the mitochondria in your cells. This is where cellular energy occurs. It acts as an electron receptor or donor in the chain of reaction that leads to cellular production. When oxidized, CoQ10 ubiquinone accepts an electron from another molecule in the chain, it becomes ubiquinol. And when ubiquinol donates an electron, it becomes ubiquinone. This state of equilibrium is necessary on how your body benefits from CoQ10. Now the chemical difference between ubiquinone and ubiquinol is the ubiquinol compound contains two hydroxyl groups. This makes it more hydrophilic or easier to dissolve in water and makes it more bioavailable than ubiquinone. In ubiquinol form, CoQ10 has the ability to scavenge free radicals in the mitochondria and cell membranes, sites where free, and ra free radicals inflict the most damage. Supplement makers have been pushing the ubiquinol form of CoQ10. They claim it's the best form because it's what's in your body produced naturally. They say that it's absorbed up to eight times better than other forms of CoQ10. Real world use, however, does not always back up the marketing claims. Some people say they feel fatigue when using ubiquinol and only energy when using ubiquinone. So you'll have to experiment and find out what works better for you. Your body can use both, but ubiquinone is far less expensive than ubiquinol. So how does CoQ10 actually work in your brain? Well, a couple of ways stand out. First, when you supplement with enough CoQ10, you're providing your brain cells with the fuel they need to produce adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. ATP is the fuel used by the mitochondria in your neurons. Mitochondria are the source of life and death for neurons. They generate your neurons' energy and control its death. But mitochondria tend to develop defects as we age. As these defects accumulate, mitochondria start to malfunction. This results in a reduction in cellular energy production and cells die. The re result of this dysfunction can be brain fog, cognition problems, poor memory, and recall. 
and ultimately diseases like Alzheimer's, Huntington's, stroke, and others. Now studies show that CoQ10 protects against this cellular damage by raising energy levels. In a study with rats, scientists put CoQ10 in their chow for 10 days before giving them a toxin that caused brain lesions. CoQ10 reduced lesions by 30% and restored, en restored energy production in neurons to nearly normal levels. And the second way CoQ10 helps your brain is CoQ10 preserves brain function, mental illness, and fights migraines. CoQ10 is essential not only in preventing brain deterioration at a structural level, but in maintaining normal function at all ages. Now studies are beginning to show some troubling associations between migraine headaches and mental health issues like depression and schizophrenia. Now scientists don't know for sure what causes migraines, but think it may be related to brain energy levels. Studies show that CoQ10 supplementation in children adolescents, and adults had significant decreases in frequency and length of migraines. Depression bipolar disorder and schizophrenia have long been considered separate health issues. Lately, they are being recognized as having mitochondrial dysfunction in common and higher oxidative stress levels. Just one of many studies show that depression in older bipolar adults had a significant reduction in symptoms. This was after treatment with 1,200 milligrams of CoQ10 per day. So we've got research from thousands of studies that have shown coenzyme Q10 will boost energy levels and stamina, reduce fatigue, reduce the possibility of age-related diseases, lower blood pressure, lower blood sugar levels, provide protection and energy to your brain, and boost cerebral blood flow. But how does CoQ10 feel when you take it as a nootropic supplement? Well, optimizing your mitochondria is one of the most powerful strategies you have to extend your life. Mitochondrial dysfunction is associated with the aging process, including many age-related diseases. So when taking CoQ10, you should feel better and more energized. Thinking should be clearer, less fatigue and stamina improved. Some neurohackers report feeling more fatigue when taking ubiquinol and actually feel better taking the less optimized form ubiquinone. Now, as I said, we've got a ton of research backing up coenzyme Q10. One in particular stands out that I, I want to talk about here, and this is about veterans coming back from the Gulf, the first Gulf War. About one-third of the 700,000 troops deployed during the first Persian Gulf War had been diagnosed with Gulf War illness. Symptoms include fatigue, muscle pain, weakness, and decreased cognitive function. Gulf War illness was caused by exposure to pesticides, siren nerve gas, and other toxins during the war. Forty-six United States Gulf War veterans participated in this randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study all had been diagnosed with Gulf War illness. The veterans were given CoQ10 in pill form or a placebo for three and a half months. Researchers concluded that 80% of these, those receiving only 100 milligrams of CoQ10 during this study saw improvements with headaches, irritability, recall, and muscle pain. The degree of the improvement correlated to the degree with the CoQ10 levels in, uh, is in the blood as it increased. Now there's a lot more studies. Go to the article on Nootropics Expert and just search for CoQ10 and you'll see the other clinical studies that I've got listed there. As for dosage, well dosing CoQ10 depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Generally dosing uh, for a healthy adult is 30 to 400 milligrams daily. As an antioxidant, 60 to 150 milligrams a day. For muscle control problems, 300 to 3,000 milligrams daily. For Alzheimer's disease, 400 milligrams. Heart attack recovery, 30 to, 60 milligram, 30 to 600 milligrams. To prevent heart disease, 200 milligrams. Chemotherapy side effects, 50 to 90 milligrams. 
to improve exercise performance, 50 to 300 milligrams. Male infertility and Peyronie's disease, 30 to 300 milligrams daily. Diabetic nerve pain, 400 milligrams. Weight loss, 100 milligrams of CoQ10 per day. Now note that recommended dosing is for as long as you have the symptoms. Work with your doctor and get tested for CoQ10 levels in your blood. Once your CoQ10 levels are optimized, you can scale back to a maintenance dose. Now as for side effects, the primary side effect of using CoQ10 in your nootropic stack is you'll feel better. You should have more energy and thinking should be clearer and faster. CoQ10 may reduce the toxic effect of some chemotherapy drugs and it may enhance the effectiveness of some blood pressure medications, which can be a good or bad depending on your situation. CoQ10 can reduce the efficacy of a blood thinner like warfarin. It can also lower blood sugar levels, so it needs to be monitored if you have diabetes. Caution is advised when using CoQ10 with aspirin, especially if you have a bleeding disorder. So talk to your doctor if you're on any medication before start using CoQ10. Now a few people who use CoQ10 report rashes, nausea, abdominal pain, dizziness, sensitivity to light, irritability, headache, heartburn, or fatigue. Some neurohackers say they feel fatigue when using ubiquinol, but not with the less expensive ubiquinone. Experiment and see what works for you. So the two available forms are ubiquinone and ubiquinol. Now, some alternative health practitioners advise staying away from ubiquinone because your body has to convert it to ubiquinol to use it. If you are under 25 and in good health, you can likely get the benefit of CoQ10 with the less expense of ubiquinone. Over 25 and you're better off with ubiquinol. Ubiquinol is identical to 95% of the CoQ10 your body is designed to naturally produce which means your body doesn't have to convert it to CoQ10 to use it. Now some in vitro research shows that ubiquinol is up to eight times more bioavailable than other CoQ10 supplements. And I think that this eight times may be um, a bit of an exaggerated marketing claim. So CoQ10 comes in liquid and capsule form and logic says that the liquid form is easier to absorb by your body. And that's my nootropics expert recommendation for coenzyme, Q, uh, coenzyme Q10, 200 to 400 milligrams a day. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to nootropicsexpert.com and search for CoQ10, or click on the link below this video. There you'll link through to a full transcript of this video, and you'll find dozens of articles on all the well-known nootropics on, on, over on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or want to share your experience using CoQ10, go to my article on Nootropics Expert and leave it in the comments section at the bottom of the article. If you want to see more videos on all the popular nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.